Have we been in the Navy with the Navy? <laughs> uh, it's it's it felt like we've been in the Navy. Yeah. Uh, we started out with a trip to, to Japan and we did a show on um, Atsugi Base and also over at uh, Yakuska. And basically, what that was was the homecoming of the Kitty Hawk. So um, we had to jet back to the States for like literally one or two days and then we headed right back out and our first stop was in uh, Lamont, no, where was it? Rota, Rota, Spain. And then uh, we jumped over to Naples, did the base over there, got some amazing olive oil. <laughs> and then we jumped back to, um, to Rota and we took a helo out to the, or cod, we got to cod out to the Roosevelt and we did a show out there and spent the night and saw what it was like to uh, be in the Navy. And, um, and then we came back and we went to Siganella? Siganella. And let's see, from there we went to La Madalena. And from La Madalena we went to uh, Bahrain and spent a couple days there. Went out to the uh, Nimitz ship also. And they really opened their doors and let us see pretty much all their operations. Uh, some of us went over to, the, what was the name of the ship we visited? The name of Chosin. The, the Chosin. We, yeah, a couple of us went over to the Chosin and uh, visited those guys. And then we came back and um, we're on our way home now. As we pass many cross our people and ask many I mean, the shows were a lot different than those army shows in the States. I mean, like JR said, you know, it was just a, a different vibe across the board because, you know, just coming out of the the war that we just had and stuff, you know, the level of appreciation that I think we felt from um, from the people out there was just overwhelming, and that's really what you know, what made it for us. But as far as expectations, I mean, I didn't even know where we were going. I had to look up in the encyclopedia with my kids where the heck Bahrain was. I mean, I had never even heard of this place. So, um, to be honest with you, we had no idea what to expect, but uh, it's been awesome. It was life-changing for us, I think, and for me, um, personally. And I was overwhelmed at the reaction that uh, the sailors and everyone that we've gone and played for had for us. I actually met a guy from Jersey, where I'm from, who gave me his Sailor of the Year coin, which apparently is like the equivalent almost of an Academy Award for a sailor, you know, so. I mean, stuff like that, I mean, it, their appreciation, I don't think there was one stop where we weren't told tenfold how many times, how much it was appreciated that we came over and, uh, you know, um, really made a difference for them. Because these guys were out at sea and we spent a couple days on the ships, and even a couple days you get a feeling of how uh, the close quarters are on the, on the boat and um, how it can get really claustrophobic and day-to-day day in day out routine of uh, Navy life so she mentioned that some of these guys were literally giving the shirts off their back the shoes off their feet yeah yep yep they were given the we have I have a one from the flight deck purple one and what's yours there? hangar deck hangar deck what's your ordinance baby you got ordinance too you ain't ordinance. Ordinance. it's all about red <laughs> it's all about Oh, that it was, first of all, it was amazing. And uh, I don't think anybody at home really has an understanding of what people are doing here. I mean, they have a sense of, okay, they're in the military and they're, they're not here, but, you know, the level of commitment and what people do and, you know, how, 
how dedicated they are to what they do and and you know supporting people back at home by doing what they do um, I think is a you know it, it's not widely understood you know how much they work too. every day seven days oh. a week yeah yeah I mean these guys you know they volunteer to do it as well yeah too. they volunteer to do it and they work you know amazingly difficult hours you know really long shifts you know very dangerous you know but yet very routine you know that, that was the thing that was so amazing to me is getting on the flight line while they're you know launching jets recovering jets it's just total chaos uh, and these guys are just they do this every day so it is as routine as brushing your teeth but no less dangerous you know he's gonna do something he hasn't done in a while he's been digging your uh, your hairstyle so much he decided to uh, join the ranks here is there a barber in the house? Here he comes. I'd like it high and tight, bro. High and tight. Oh. My, my, my navel shaved down high and tight. <laughs> well, um, usually when summer comes, I like to get a nice little uh, short cut, bleach my hair blonde, and, you know, grow my goat out with the blonde stripe. So I thought, I gotta get a haircut for the summer, and then I thought, well, we're going to be on a ship playing for sailors. Why don't I just do it on stage and just make a good time out of it? So I had the Navy barber on the Roosevelt come up and give me a high and tight in front of four or 5,000 uh, sailors on board the ship. And uh, we actually had the Navy band play the background music. They came up and played on the instruments. And uh, it was a riot. I like it. It's nice. Nice and cool. Spain at the base there, there was, uh, we got a chance um, as we had a day off to actually go and, and uh, visit and just kind of get a good tour of the base and we went and they had a fleet hospital there. I think it was Fleet Hospital 8. Is that right? Okay. I actually remember and I'm impressed. Um, and this is, this is one of the two main hospitals that they had past the, really past the front lines. There's one in, uh, in, in Germany, Ramstein. And, uh, and then in Rota, where they brought people that were wounded from the war. And, um, I mean, this thing was amazing. It was designed to be put literally anywhere. And they just found some dirt, on empty dirt on the base, and they built this thing. In a week, I think, they put this thing together. It had up to 500 beds. I mean, it has every possible thing you could have in the most modern hospital was in this place. And we, the chaplain gave us a tour around the, the, the hospital that day um, and uh, we got a chance to actually sit back and talk to guys who had been there and had been wounded and um, that in itself was probably the most amazing uh, few hours I spent on the whole trip was actually talking to these guys I mean he's literally sitting in a bed and he'd been shot you know and he's just hanging out talking about you know missing home and I, you know and he's I think this guy was maybe 19 years old some of these guys were so young you know I can't imagine what they had already gone through. I mean, <clears throat> such a small amount of time. Uh, yeah, I'll just, I don't know, I'll just never, never forget talking to those guys. I just can't imagine what they went through. So it was, it was a beautiful thing, though. Good good people, you know. Actually, one thing that, that, that captured my attention the most was the fact that they were less concerned about what had happened to them and more concerned about the people that were in their units uh, that were still in. And still over there, still in Iraq, still in Baghdad, you know, hiding from snipers and dealing with that, and the fact that they couldn't be there with them, they felt they felt guilty for it. You know, I was just like, wow, that's some incredible dedication. You know, um, and uh, just the, the camaraderie that goes about through all the people that work is is uh, is incredible. You know, I wish I could see that more in just people in general. It was definitely a cross-section of, of people and races and cultures. And mix in with that, the fact that we were really late and we had all these power problems. And it was a, it was a big whirlwind that actually came off really well. I think, yeah, props to the CBs for props. building the stage last minute. I think we actually like borrowed power from some mafia house right behind us. And we literally had a couple cables and 
and um, I think some of Jim's gear blew up and everyone was having gremlins in their gear happen and um, it was just a moment for us to get up and just go for it and do it and I think the people saw that and they know they got a really good show and um, and of course they threw all their appreciation right back we, re we put it out they received it and threw it right back at us and we received it tenfold I think and it was just right out in the marketplace with you know the Mediterranean all around us is it, it was amazing Oh, I love the Navy. Our Navy is so badass. Rocking. It is so badass. Yep. Just, Navy rocks. Actually, I got, I Pretty got darn one, impressive. One last comment about the Navy. I, I realized the other day that I probably wouldn't be here if it weren't for the Navy because my father was in the Navy and uh, he got a chance to go to Stanford, but he couldn't pay for it. So he spent four years in the Navy on a submarine and uh, paid his way to Stanford, which is where he went, met my mother. So I wouldn't be around one for the Navy. So I gotta have, you know, I got some love for the Navy, right here deep inside. I appreciate it. All right. So would you guys, when you're talking to the bands, would you tell them, yeah, you, something you should do, or? Oh, I would recommend this to everyone. Yeah. You gotta do it yeah. for the helicopter and uh, C2 flights alone. You know, <laughs> getting shot off the carriers. <laughs> One of the most insane experience, yeah. experiences I've ever felt. One of the things I thought also that was amazing was that um, at any given show, we would sit and we would do autographs afterwards, and these guys would line up, and we'd do it for hours. hours. And you would literally meet someone at one show from almost every 50 states. And I don't know where else you could ever do that, where you know you play one show and you're, you're meeting someone from Arkansas and Florida, and maybe Alaska and Hawaii. So... As far as, you know, one of the main things that a band wants to do when it tours is it's reaching the people that care about what they do. And so it's incredibly effective as far as meeting new people and exposing them to their music. So there's a huge appreciation that goes on both in both ways, or for both parties, that is.